Hello, my little cherry blossoms. Today's video is going to be the first in a series of videos I am tentatively calling Art Chats. For my YouTube channel, alongside art supply reviews and tutorials, I also wanted to do some podcast type styles too. And if you are like me, um, I really enjoy consuming art videos that have voiceovers because one, I feel like it allows me to get to know the artist more, and two, it functions like a podcast, and that way I can have it playing in the background while I myself am painting or drawing. So I thought that it might be a good idea to try and create such videos myself for you guys. So think of it like an art date, if you will. So feel free to grab your own art supplies and paint along with me, or grab a nice drink and hang out. To begin, for those of you who do not know who or what the heck this Captor of Cards is, it is an anime and manga series from the 90s that featured our amazing heroine Sakura, who finds this old sorcerer's book and accidentally unleashes all the magical cards that was contained within it. Thus, the series begins with her accessing her magical powers to capture all the cards and yield their power. The screen cap that I am recreating is a still from the opening of the second season. The whole aesthetic of it is like the most magical pastel dream, so of course I had to pick this one. Plus, there's cherry blossom petals floating in the air, which is perfectly fitting for this character. I'm sure, like myself, many of you who are a fan of Card Capture Sakura are also a fan of Sailor Moon, and Something that crossed my mind sometimes is that Usagi is like the character you relate to because she's kind of lazy and just wants to eat and play video games all the time. And Sakura is the character I feel like we should strive to be. She participates in clubs, she really thrives at school, and is like the most responsible fourth grader you'll ever hope to be. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that one character is better than the other. I just feel like it's an interesting contrast to the same genre because I feel like sometimes main characters are not necessarily role models and I think that is a unique thing about Sakura. When I had first started my Card Captain Sakura obsession, I was about 12, which was a little bit older than Sakura is in the show. I feel like in your preteens, it's such a pivotal transition from childhood to your teenage years. And for me, I think in discovering my love for this show at that time, I got to hold on to that whimsy in my childhood just a little longer, just vicariously living through this character. And this series is so incredibly heartwarming and wholesome, which to this day is really like comfort food to me. I, I don't watch it all the time, obviously, but when I just think back at it, it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Especially since I feel like most animes are constantly over sexualizing their female characters even if they are or appear very young which can be pretty tiresome and gratuitous and that was something that i felt like never happened in this particular series and i was very grateful for that and it's kind of nice to just think back at it in a, in a very pure world <laughs> Another unique thing about this series is that there is no real villain. In the first half of the series, the obstacle she is facing is capturing the cards, which are typically causing mischief, but nothing incredibly sinister. And then in the second half of the series, the antagonist, Ariel, is not actually evil, uh, but he's just creating scenarios that help Sakura hone her magical powers. So in the end, all the different challenges that she faces is there in order for her to grow as a sorcerer and a person, which is kind of a nice metaphor for life. There isn't necessarily just black and white evil. And I think it's just nice to know that there is a show out there that is unapologetically pure but is still interesting and appealing to an older audience. 
I grew up and currently still live in Canada, so my first experience with this series was when they were airing the North American dub on TV. I immediately fell in love with the show, and with my newfound access to the great wide web, I began to discover and understand the entire genre of anime and manga in general. Previous to seeing the show, I of course watched other classics that came to North America during the 90s, such as Pokemon and Sailor Moon and a few Studio Ghibli films, which at the time I just read as like other cartoons. But now with the internet, I was able to consume all things card captors beyond its actual airtime on TV. After some digging, I realized that one, anime originated from Japan and it was its own niche genre of animation. And that too, when bringing the series to North America, they were often severely altered to be quote unquote, more palatable for its new audience, which I had found to be ridiculous and was really mad that I was missing out on the clearly superior version of the show. One of the major things that happened with Card Captor Sakura when it was being dubbed for North American audiences was that they wanted the show to feel less quote unquote feminine so that it could potentially appeal to boys and thus a wider audience. Which is silly because I feel like a lot of the charm in this show for me is that it really embraces its femininity while the character is still fully capable and strong. Like those two things are not exclusive from each other. And they had also scrapped like the original openings that were light and airy for a montage of action clips from the show, which had like a much more masculine opening song. And like, admittedly, it was pretty catchy. You know, card captors, a mystic adventure card. You know, <laughs> you know the song. <laughs> but it completely dismissed the whimsy from the original openings. And another thing that happened, not only to this show, but many animes being dubbed in those days, was they had also changed most of the Japanese characters' names. And they thought that Japanese names would be too difficult for kids to understand. So, like, instead of Sakura Kinomoto, her name was Sakura Avalon. And her best friend Tomoyo just, just, just got straight up changed to Madison. Another thing that happened, this is a long list guys, another thing that happened was they had watered down any of the romantic storylines to the point of removing certain scenes altogether. Again, I think this was appeared to this was to appear less girly and put more focus on the magic and action because they thought mm, boys are not into romance, whatever. And furthermore, there was like a complete total censorship on any and all of the same-sex romance, which was obviously a total bummer. The original Japanese version of the show and series did such a beautiful job at normalizing and representing same-sex relationships and crushes. And I thought it was just so sweet and it was not something that I found to be weird or jarring when I had found out about it. And I just so frustrated that such a progressive kind of viewpoint was totally removed, which I mean, I guess I'm not surprised, but still upset about it anyways. P.S. Toya and Yukito, OTP for life. With that being said, one relationship in the show that I cannot and will not ever get behind was one of Sakura's friends, I think her name was Rika, had something going on with her homeroom teacher and it is not okay. They are in the fourth grade and their teacher is a full grown adult man. I think in the show it had been displayed more like the 
student had a crush on her teacher, which is fine, that's normal, happens all the time, but I feel like in the manga or somewhere in the canon, there is an implication that the teacher reciprocate those feelings, and I just, oh my god, no, no, no. I don't understand why anyone thought that was okay, but yeah, that was something that deeply irked me about the show. But other than that fatal flaw, I absolutely adore this show and I'm so thankful for the internet because I was able to watch the original Japanese version and enjoy all of its feminine and gay elements in all of its glory. <laughs> As I had mentioned earlier, this series was not only my gateway into the deep dark hole of my anime obsession in my teens, but it simultaneously sparked my real love for drawing. Of course, like most kids, I enjoyed drawing and coloring ever since I'd picked up a crayon, but it wasn't until watching this show where I was consistently drawing all the time. An adorable shtick in the show is that Tomoyo, uh, Sakura's best friend, she is an aspiring costume designer and so she creates all of these different outfits for Sakura to wear while she's on her adventures. So of course I had an itch to draw them and so I would just use you know a regular HB school pencil and some computer copy paper you know just things that were lying around the house and I would google the official artwork and try and replicate them and then from there I thought oh what if I created my own versions of her costumes having you know an affinity for fashion and things like that and so from there I started to get a little bit more creative and just kept continuing to draw beyond fan art and beyond like the official copying the official artwork. And like many small town anime obsessed preteens, I had no one in my life to enjoy this content with. Eventually, I had stumbled upon this website called The Otaku, which was basically what it sounds like. It was an online platform for people to share their anime fan art. It was basically a low budget deviant art, but anime specific. It was the perfect place for me because now I had somewhere to share all this artwork I was making with and able to connect with other anime fans across the globe. And I think the website is still online. I just never deleted my account. So potentially my bad anime fan art is still floating around on the internet, but we don't need to investigate that. But yeah, so long story short, that is why Cardcaptor Sakura is particularly special to me as a series. Not only do I love the show and the sentiment behind it in general, but it really did launch the beginning of my artistic journey. I don't know what my work would look like had I not watched or became like obsessed with this show. And even though I feel like my work has, of course, like evolved beyond replicating anime manga uh, style, but I feel like just the general aesthetic and color palettes and things like that really helped inform what my work looked like looks like now and I had so much fun recreating this screenshot I'm thinking I definitely want to do another one perhaps from maybe Studio Ghibli comment down below which film or character you'd like to see me redraw next anyway thank you so much for watching I hope that was an interesting insight see you next time